The next uh, item on the agenda is a uh, a young uh, is on the way to Mayfield. Now we went outside Carrigley because we have made great friends and good friends and great friends with Mayfield's main ship. So we have Billy Murphy, he tells a few stories. We are on that metaphor of Mayfield. And he is the father of Billy Murphy of the Yellow Fingers. So give a warm welcome to Billy Murphy of the Yellow Fingers. <laughs> and he's going to confess with the other pet afterwards. <laughs> And they went 
know to carry it. And they were going around up to the Yidyak uh, And they spotted this guy fishing inside the field. And he had a massive shark on. He had a southwestern boots. And the pond wasn't as big as half the place here. You know, he was a big sea. He was sitting there. They said, hold him. He said, hold him. We got a film of this guy. We interviewed him. So he went in and said, morning, Penny. He said, all about him. So, and he said, tell me, uh, what's the fishing like here? Oh, great. Right, it's very good here. Now. He said, very good fishing. And tell me, what would you catch here? Oh, he said, you'd catch whales. <laughs> <laughs> the man said, you want the pink whales, killer whales, blue whales, all oh, those no, is he whales. <laughs> And there, lo and behold, was a fellow with a donkey, like cat. They call him donkey, he's out there. Donkey. And he uh, got like Ross, who made an ass of himself above the door, and he called it. He called it for one, so she paid a donkey. And he called her a donkey. And there's a donkey, he's out there. Anyway, the poor guy had a donkey and cat. And he observed him anyway, and he was at a, an archway. And the donkey's here for stop. So they said, God, come on, get the camera out, we've got to film this, watch this guy. He said, I go over to him anyway, next to me. The guy went to the car and he got all hammer and chisel. And he started to make the two grooves in the, in the top to try and get the number easier as true. So, so the end went over to him, he said, excuse me, he says, baby, I'm an engineer back in the States. And I, when I go on the site, I observe everything. And he said, I specifically observe that there's earth on the ground. And if you probably shot you'd be true in no time. I would just see it and suspect the ears of all God's things. Anyway, the uh, <laughs> the ants getting good hammer, you know, like you know, poor thing. There was a guy caught right into the car bed as well, he was down to Polk. <laughs> He was going along and he was a very inquisitive guy. He said to her, What's the, what do you want to do, Scott? She said, Carrots, Carrots. He said, Well, back in the States, he says, Carrots are two foot long. You can't call it a carrot unless it's two feet. Oh. So he said, What are they? She said, They're a cabbage, carriage. He said, We got some Brussels sprouts bigger than that. And he kept on and on. And next thing he came in, he says, What are they? And she said, They're potatoes. He said, Why, back in the States, we got potatoes this size. He went to she said, we grow them here for the size of your mouth. Anyway, there was the, 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 the local doctor here in Calgary, I mean, he, he, this lady went to see one day, she had ferocious adulthood babies, you know, very bad. Obviously. So he said to her, look, I think it's just a bad bout of wound. I should have pass it, no time. So I'll, I'll give you this shut up a free chair. You should just try that anyway, that will cure me. So anyway, about 12 months later, she's coming down the main street, carrying a line, and who's coming towards her? The doctor, she's pushing her brown. And he stopped and says, Mary, is that a bonnet you were there? No, she said, that's a fact with a bonnet on. <laughs> That's your last half, he says. 
I let that poor knock big speeds. <laughs> He's 
Davis or any Davis picked your wife. So he got a phone call anyway from the governor, and the governor said, Mick, the chair is down, we frying your guy tomorrow. Can you get out straight away? It's sure, no problem. Got on the plane anyway, the governor's car is being waiting for at the airport. He drives him and he says, Mick, what do you reckon on the way? I says, probably a fuse or a bit of oil, loose oil. We let it go to five minutes. So did he lets him into where the, uh, the chair is, and he goes up to the office. Two hours I've had to go down and have a look at me. He went down and asked the guy. The chair was unrecognizable. It was sprayed all over the floor. There was this he said, Mick, he said, do you realize? He said, there's a guy got to go down tomorrow. Hang on, he said, you're the luckiest man in the world. He said, you call me. He says, do you realize? He said, somebody could have been electrocuted. <laughs> so, good luck.